Well, I asked you who you thought was going to win. You gave an intelligent answer. Let me ask you, final question. Is gaming going to take a much bigger role in the future of tennis? Yes. Gambling, gaming? Yes, it is. And um, hopefully for the folks out here hearing that for the first time and get nervous, understand a couple of things. Number one, tennis is gambled upon in every other country in the world except here. Uh, And actually, the truth is that the more that it is done officially then the cleaner it is. You know, the safest city in America, they always used to say was Las Vegas, right? (laughs) Because no one's going to commit a crime there because it's not in the best interest of the business. And so it's in the best interest of the people who are in the gaming and betting businesses to make sure that there's, that it's clean. The most conservative estimate you'll get from the worldwide experts is that the current amount of money that is spent by the American public on sports betting before it became legal, right? So the illegal is about $160 billion. Billion with a B. Billion, as opposed (laughs) to the entire movie business, which is about 13 to 15. So So it's 10 to 12 times as much. And that's illegal, right? And so that's a behavior that people like. I mean, there's a lot of people that say, look, it wouldn't be an NFL if, if it weren't for the ability to have a way to root along. And most of those bets are small, small bets. When you turn on the set to watch, our whole job is to help you try to figure out who you think is going to win at any given moment. Mm -hmm. And that's what's fun about it. So having a little skin in the game makes it more fun. And aren't the vast majority of people that bet on this type thing doing just that, putting a little skin in the game? Absolutely. We always have gambling addicts. We have people that will bet the farm, lose the house, but aren't the vast majority of people betting just enough to tantalize and tease one another? And they're not trying to get rich over it. They're just putting a little something on it to make it interesting. Exactly right. It's the prop bet. It's you. It's us sitting around on the court watching and saying, hey, you know, is he going to go out down the line or wide? You know, I think of it this way so that people don't think we're self-interested in saying this. It's a form of engagement that just makes it fun. If you think about the type of gambling in sports that most people in this country participate in, it's probably either the Super Bowl or March Madness office box score, Mm -hmm. right? And there's about zero skill in that because you're just getting numbers and buying boxes. But it makes you want to watch. And and that is the widest and broadest. And it makes it fun. And it's really about just having a little bit of fun. If it gets to be more than that, you know, that's a completely different situation. Yeah. But your theory about it is it keeps it clean, keeps it above board. It's not back alley. No question Leg breaking. You got to pay up front. You don't. Most people aren't even betting on the outcome of a match, right? It's, hey, how many aces? It's, is she going to, and the odds change. And so it's fun and it forces engagement. You pay attention and you get smarter and that's fun. That's exciting, you know? And I'm convinced that if we sit down and have this discussion in three, five or 10 years from now, we're going to look back. It's going to be hard to have imagined that it was that big a deal. Right now, fantasy is a big part of what we do on the air during the U.S. Open. We have one of the mm-hmm. big DraftKings who's been a partner of ours. And it's really fun. Our talent gets excited about kind of betting against each other. And it's a couple of shekels here or there and nothing more. Yeah. And if it gets more than that, then that's a whole other issue. They need to come see me if exactly. that's a bigger issue. 